Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Medieval Times. Last time we officially started working at a hoe house. Because <laughs> we gotta make a little extra coin, I guess. We even have a little coin pouch now to store all our hoe money. And we also met a dragon that said he was in love with us just out of nowhere? And that's gonna be fun. And we also had to sleep with um a really old gross daddy character um to help so he would stop abusing jeffrey but like i i don't know it was it was weird um i don't know if we'll actually stop abusing jeffrey but now we're also talking to a centaur <laughs> because we helped him, I think, a little bit. Or we're gonna help him more. I, I don't know. I can't wait for this centaur. This centaur fun times. Um, um, yes, is that the... I don't even remember what voice I was doing for him. Yes, is that the apothecary? Um, told me that he hasn't received the herbs that he needed for the medicine. And they're not going to be here until tomorrow. Oh, that's bad. I'm sorry. <laughs> You're really helpful. <laughs> <laughs> but then again, why are you telling me this, centaur man? What, what am I gonna do? And honestly, I didn't want to sleep again in the town square. You just slept in the town square yesterday? You just went ahead and collapsed there? Okay. Or maybe you sleep standing up. Horses sleep standing up, I think so. And I decided to take your offer. Of course it doesn't bother you. Oh, I, I offered you something? <laughs> I don't know, man. I, I can't really remember that. Of course not. Not at all. Come on with me. Did I say you could come to my house? I don't know. Do we have a stables for him? I don't think so. Both started the way to Bennett's house. Sorry to ask, but I know very little about you. Bennett was a little embarrassing to ask. Or no, Bennett was a little embarrassed to ask. Yeah, sure. Ask me with no shame. Okay, tell me about your horsey. Your horsey. Where would you like to sleep? Is that... <laughs> There's no problem. Wherever you say. It's the same for me. You're giving me a place to sleep. I'm not going to be pretentious. Okay, right in my bed with me. <laughs> Might collapse, though. Oops, I skipped a line. Um, <laughs> not at all. It's just that I know so little about you. That I don't know how you get sleep in a bed. Over straw like a normal horse? I'm sorry if I'm disrespectful. Huh, not at all. I understand you. I know that you don't know about our culture. In our settlement, we have hovels with the floor full of straw and sleep on it. Wow, I didn't know. Okay, so I have the ideal place for you. Next to home, we have a small barn where our horses sleep. If you want. <laughs> I'll just sleep with all the barnyard animals. Excellent, thank you, Bennett. I never thought a human could be so nice. Haha, <laughs> don't even say it. Both kept walking until they got to Bennett's house. We're having a little wholesome moment here. Um, very good, we arrived. Here it is. I didn't even know we had a stables. Seriously. Interesting. Anyway, they get into the barn. I mean, if you want, you can sleep in the house. He is so red. What happened? <laughs> What happened to him? Uh, this is worse than when Bennett lost all his melanin <laughs> back at the mines. Oh, this is awful. Um, not at all. This place is perfect. It kind of makes me remember home. Is he angry? Is his blood just boiling? Really, thank you, Bennett. I don't know how to thank you. Uh, you have nothing to thank. If you want, I go for some beer to the house. And if you don't mind, we can talk for a while. I'm dying to know more about you. Sure, it would be a pleasure. After a few minutes later, Bennett comes back with beers. So he decided to go out for a walk in the woods to clear his mind and go back to sleep. Is Acteon going to call out to us and then we're going to have a real, a real fun time with him? While he walked in, in the woods, he was thinking about um, Acteon's words regarding Galazer. 
he was really intrigued. Why did Galazar put his eyes on him? He literally told us. Why are you still acting that way? Like, am I imagining? Am I just misremembering that Galazar told us, like, he felt a special connection to us? Or did he actually say that? I, it's been a while since I last played. In that moment, he remembered he had the locket in his pocket. Got a locket in my pocket. And if he... Thinking if he should use it or not, held it in his hand and said, Galazar, that's it? That's all you gotta do? Bennett calls Galazar, but nothing happens. Well, I mean, maybe he has to fly here. Galazar. Bennett didn't know what to think. If Galazar had tricked him or something had happened to him. Anyway, it was already late. He was cold and beginning to feel sleepy. So he began his way home again. Arriving home, he decided to take a look at the barn to see how Acteon was. He was deeply asleep. And again, he couldn't stop looking at his... Yeah. He'd never seen something that size, not even in a horse. What do you mean, not even in a horse? Pretty average for a horse. Then I came back to himself and kept his way home. He went straight to his room and laid down. A few minutes later, he was already asleep. It had been a really long day. Then it wakes up and starts to get dressed. And the moment he was leaving his room, he listens to some wailing from his father's room. <gasps> Acteon! Father! No! <laughs> he thought of going to s What? Dude! What's wrong with you? He thought of going to snoop on what was going on. But in truth, the truth is that he had already had several embarrassing scenes lately, so he preferred to end up getting dressed. <sighs> And going to the kitchen to get and to going to the kitchen to get some food. If you're going to the kitchen to get some food, why are you sneaking? Why are you uh, skulking around outside the door? All right, there you go. Well, while in the kitchen, suddenly a loud moan is heard. Arg! Don't stop! Oh my God, he's actually with. Uh, sure, Acteon is. In that moment, Bennett felt how curiosity ate him from within. All he wanted to know was who his father was with. Dude, what's wrong with you? Bennett was really intrigued for knowing who he was with. It shows that he was having a really good time. Bennett, you're disgusting. <laughs> I mean, I know this is like a long time coming, but you're disgusting, Bennett. <laughs> How do you... Ew, you're just, that's your dad. Ew, since he had memory, he rarely, rarely saw him with a woman. And, like, little Usher was always very reserved in this regard. But Venet couldn't stop thinking that his father was a human being and somehow had to satisfy his needs. But on the other hand, he knew he was going... He knew that he was going to snoop into his room and could end up really bad, so he gets out of the house without thinking. Before his father left the room. He didn't want to meet him. After what... Oh, I was hoping to, like... To walk in on them. I hope Bennett was be that disgusting and creepy. He didn't want to meet him after what he had heard, or even worse, come ac across his company lady. So he left the house with some fruit and went to go see Acteon to see how he spent the night. Hello, Acteon. I nothing to see down there today. But upon reaching the barn, he realized Acteon was still sleeping. Okay, he wasn't with Acteon. So he left some fruit on a pile of hay and left the barn. Surely he will see them later. Um, he will see him later in town. Of course, before leaving, Bennett stopped to watch Acteon's body. He still didn't understand why Acteon generated such an attraction. What are you breaking out into a run like that for? Distracted by what he was seeing, Bennett stumbles over a plan... That protrude a plank that protrudes from the ground and falls to the ground. Oh god, okay, he's tripping, I guess. Oh, okay. Thought he was like breaking out into some kind of Naruto run. <gasps> I don't know. What the Okay, he looks like he's getting ready to to, 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 <laughs> to uh, get into a little spat or something. Look at him. Are you ready to tumble? Or are you ready to rumble? Hecteon wakes up startled by the noise. What? Lord, no, please stop. Bennett didn't understand what was happening. Was Acteon dreaming? Once he came to himself, Acteon uh, um, realized he was dreaming and he was at Bennett's house. Hi, Bennett, good morning. Hi, Acteon, good morning. Are you okay? 
Yes, yeah, sorry. I was dreaming, I think. Okay, I brought you some fruit for breakfast. Oh, thank you. You're so polite. I don't know how I'm going to pay you this favor. Ben, I came up with only one way Acteon could pay him the favor back. What are you thinking about? But clearly didn't have enough confidence to tell him what he was thinking. Oh, God. Uh, don't mention it, Acteon. You owe me nothing. But let's just say you owe me a favor to be cashed in at a later date of my choosing. Clearly humans are not that bad as my friends have told me. No, we're sick, we're perverse. <laughs> you have no idea who you're talking to. You got no idea, this little ball of sin. Don't fool yourself, haha. <laughs> we are not all the same, that I can assure. Oh, maybe you are the exception to the rule. Don't be silly, I just do what anyone would do. I think that this is where you're wrong. Not everyone would do what you do. Maybe you're right. I've always thought that if anyone can help someone, it's his obligation to do so. That the world would be a better place. Wow, what an amazing way of thinking. I've never seen it that way. What? He just said the most basic garbage, and you're eating right out of his hand. Acteon, stop simping. And let me tell you that indeed, I know very few who think that way. Changing the subject, and I'm sorry to ask, I don't want to be picky, but the intrigue is killing me. Watch him be just as curious about human D. <laughs> Yesterday night, did you get out of your house and call out to Galazar? How do you know that? Why do you not look like you're looking at me? <laughs> you know, like, look at his eyes. It looks like he's looking off into the distance or something. But how do you know? Yes, I needed to talk to him, but he didn't show up. Every time you surprise me more, Bennett, you really got me so intrigued. You are a unique person. What? Are you talking? All I did was try to call out to him. How is it possible that you call the great Galazer? The other day in Dragon Valley, he gave me an amulet to call him in case I needed. I repeat again, you surprise me every moment. It was clear to Bennett that Antion was really surprised at the relation he had with Galazer. I know, I can tell. And being honest, Benno was too. He still couldn't understand. Well, why didn't Galazar show up for the booty call then? Because Galazar, because as Galazar uh, was so interested in him, a boy from a small abandoned town in the middle of nowhere. And I dare to think that you don't even know really what it means to be able to have such a close relation with the great Galazar. Uh, the truth, being honest, no, I still am trying to understand what he sees in me. Why someone like Galazar looks at me. I don't think that is up to you to judge. You just accept it, for something must be. Galazar is never wrong. He has been advising my people for years, and he's never given us bad advice. He is a being with infinite wisdom. Maybe you're right. Believe me, I am. You just listen to him and accept his word. Bennett wondered if Ation was talking about the same Galazar that Bennett knew. Although Galazar had an imposing and overwhelming image, the times Bennett had the chance to talk to him didn't seem to be didn't seem to be the Galazar that Ation described. He rather seemed to be much more simple and, and less, more like a friend than a superior being of infinite wisdom, as Ation said. I'll keep your advice. Well, I have to go, Acteon. Uh, mm, uh, who are we going to see in town? Taylor? <sighs> Guys, do we really want to see the Dragon D? We already saw a Horse D. I don't know if that's what we want. <sighs> well, let's just, let's try out the town option a little. Oh. We probably get a scene with him then. Eh, let's go to Dragon Valley. Let's go to Dragon Valley. If, like, if we're getting a scene with Acteon, then it's like... Oh. He's coming with us either way. We're not going to town, no. What? If you're going to town, I can take you if you want. No, thank you. <laughs> I'm going to Dragon Valley. I want to go and see Gowser. How I would like to go, but I really have to see if they have my medicine ready. Okay, see you later in town. Take care. See you, Bennett, and thank you again for everything. 
Both get ready to leave. Acteon to town and Bennett to Dragon Valley. Already on the way to Dragon Valley, Bennett has time to think a little on everything that was happening these days. And many things were happening. The mysterious note. Oh yes, the mysterious note. I keep forgetting about that. What is up with that note? We still haven't had any info about it. Borker's problem. Who was Borker again? Wasn't he... He started randomly being vaunted by the law for some reason, and I have no idea why. He was the ship guy, right? And suddenly, like, we went to the docks once, and it was just like... Uh, some He's, like, wanted now. I have no idea what happened with that, or something. And the strange relation with Galazar, couldn't... F and he couldn't forget Jeff. He really miss If we really miss him, why aren't we going to see him? Why are we going to get Dragon D if we really miss Jeff? For in an instant, he thought of going to see Jeff after talking to Galazar. <laughs> right after I get loaded up by Galazar, I'm going to go see my boyfriend. But he knew he couldn't go there every day and interrupting his training. What is he training for? I'm assuming it's to control his werewolf powers, but they never explicitly said it. Which I found odd. And on the other hand, the deal he made with Clarion certainly left him a little calmer. And he couldn't deny that he had since, um, since he had received that mysterious note yesterday. What do you mean yesterday? That wasn't yesterday. Was that yesterday? Has it been, like, has this game been on, only been occurring over the course of, like, three days so far? Not even four? Yesterday? He was so impatient by the time of the meeting, he was really intrigued about who was behind this note. What are their intentions? What are the intentions they had with him? Why him? So many questions that even if he searches for an explanation, he won't have the answer until he met with the person who sent it. On the other side, he was also worried that it would be Borker. It's been a few days since he had news about him, and what really caught his attention was that his ship had sailed. That was another reason to go to town and find out more about it. Surely he would visit Aiden, um, who would know more about the subject. Who is Aiden again? However, he had a lot on his mind, but he couldn't solve any of it either if he let himself get overwhelmed by the situation. Without realizing, he already arrived at Dragon Valley entrance. After barely a few minutes walking by, uh, after barely a few minutes of walking um, by Dragon Valley, Bennett began to suspect that something was going on. He had already passed the spot where he usually sees Galazar. And there was no trace of him. But I wondered if something had happened to Galazar. Well, I mean, is that a dragon in the... Are these actually dragons all around me? Is that safe? Hello? Really, Ben knew very little of Galazar. But not all he seemed... Um, but not all he seemed. Someone who lied... But he didn't seem like someone who lied or promised in vain. And yesterday, when he gave him the, him the amulet, he seemed really honest with his promise of coming to Benin if he needed. In that moment, Bennett sees a faraway dragon coming to him. God, we are not scared by this? Hey, good morning! You must be Bennett! <laughs> uh, yes, uh, good morning. I'm Luriel, a pleasure! Isn't that the, the creator? The name of the creator <laughs> of the game? Likewise. Bennett had the feeling that this has something to do with Galazar. He had came several times and never another dragon that wasn't Galazar had approached him and even less talked. Do you know where I can find Galazar? No, but Galazar told me that if you come around, I, I told you that for some days he wasn't going to be able to see you. Something happened? Actually, I don't know. I just know that yesterday afternoon he left a message for you. And then he left Dragon Valley. The truth is, I don't know what's going on. It's so weird that Galazard left Dragon Valley for that long. In fact, I thought that you may know something about it. N no not at all. Yesterday when I saw him for the last time, he didn't say anything to me. What's more, he gave me an amulet with which I could call him and he would come for me if I needed his help. Actually, yesterday night I used it, and Galazar never showed up. That's why I came here today. I thought that something had happened. An amulet? Yes. Bennett shows Lariel the amulet. Uh, 
Galazer gave you the amulet of... This can't be. I can't believe it. What's going on? What is this amulet? Sorry, boy. I have to go. And without more, Lirio flew and left Bennett just like that. This was getting really weird. Each time Bennett understood less of what was happening. First Galazer's interest in Bennett, then yesterday's talk with Galazer that left Bennett with more doubts than before, and now this. Bennett began to worry about this whole situation. And worst of all, is that Bennett didn't know who to run to. Nobody knew anything about dragons. The only one that has contact with dragons, or at least in his town, was Acteon. Um, so he thought that when he got back to town, he could go see him. Maybe give him some... it would give him a clue. He just hoped that he hadn't, hasn't left town yet. So without solving or understanding anything of what was happening, he decided to start the way to town. I know, without solving or understanding anything. That's the, that's the motto. Entering town, Bennett runs into Conrad. Conrad? Okay, Conrad. Hey, Conrad. Ooh, want a little manly kiss? Alright. Hi, Ben. How are you? Fine. Why do you have blood? You always have blood on your cheek, or is that just an old scar that for some reason is very red? You don't sound very convinced. <laughs> What's happened to you? No, nothing serious. Come on, Ben. I know... Uh, I know... I know you. Tell me what's going on. Okay, uh, do you have a while? Haha. <laughs> of course. How am I not going to have time for my friend? And so Bennett tells everything that happened in the, over the past few days. Wow, you have, have, you have had some shaken days. Don't even say it. Uh, even I can't realize everything that is happening to me. <laughs> the truth is that being able to tell someone everything he was going through made Bennett very good. Or made Bennett feel better. He was um, feeling a bit more relieved. Hey, you know, whatever I can help you with, you just let me know. Yes, relax. I know I can count on you. Uh, now that you say it, what were you doing the other day in my house? You left suddenly and didn't want to say anything. What are you and my father up to? <laughs> was that was that Conrad in my father's room this morning? Bennett knew that his birthday was coming up soon and that surely they were organized something between the two of them. Who, Bennett's birthday? I guess so. Nothing, Ben. I already told you. I just went to make an order to your father. Come on, tell me. Hey, don't get a don't be a nuisance. I just went to order your father some work. Bennett knew the way Conrad got defensive again, but something he was hiding. So he decided to change the subject before Conrad could get in a bad mood. Okay, forgotten subject. Um, hey, do you want to go to the tavern tonight and have a drink? And maybe we could uh, repeat on the other night. What do you say? Yeah, sure. I would love that. Very good idea. It would be good for me to clear my mind a little. Haha. <laughs> okay, perfect. I'll wait for you tonight in the tavern. Now I leave you that I have... I have to finish some errands. Okay, take care. You too. Conrad kept his way towards the outskirts of town, and Bennett went to the square to see if he could find Actian. Bennett was heading to the square, as always, to avoid bumping into all the people in the center of town. He decided to cut paths between buildings. Oh, fuck me, Trogum. <laughs> oh, what? No. Stop. Stop. You've gone too far. You've gone too far. Let's get an instant replay. Uh, oops, wait. Wait, what? Oh, fuck me, Trogum. What is that? Yeah, oh, F me, brother. Oh, fuck me, Trogum. Oh, fuck me, oh, fuck me, Trogum. Well, looks like we have a mystery afoot, gang. Jinkies. Let's go solve this. <sighs> when suddenly almost reaching the square, he hears, um, 
from between the buildings. And Penna looks... <sighs> Do we really have to be this guy? I mean, you know, when we're having public fun, nobody goes ahead and sneaks a peep on us. Or maybe they do, and we just don't notice. Huh, maybe. I don't know. Benna looks out to the alley and couldn't believe what he was seeing. Dragon was effing Caleb. Is Caleb the ugly bread boy? Let's just run away. Let's skedaddle. Once everything ended, Bennett quickly got out of there before they saw him. Arriving at the sewer. Honey, a hundred other people saw them too, so let's not kid ourselves. Um, he sees act. Is that Jeffrey? He looks like him. On the left, right? I think it's him, but I don't know. Um, alright, well, whatever. He sees Acteon far away near the fountain, laying on the ground. Hi, Acteon, how are you? Here I am, waiting for the medicine. Isn't it ready yet? No, the apothecary says that if I wanted it right now, I have to pay him more gold. What? If not, I have to wait. What a fraud. Don't even say it. The worst thing is that I already paid in advance, and now he says that if I want it right now, I have to pay more. I'm furious. But I realized that the situation was exceeding Actian. Wait, calm down. How much do you have to pay? I haven't been hoeing around, so I don't know what to tell you. I can't... I can't give you any money. I, I mean, I've been ho I have been hoeing around, but I haven't been hoeing around for money. Um, I should do that. At least if, I, if I'm going to do it, I might as well get paid, right? 300 gold coins. Sorry, I can't help you with that, that, with that act. Yeah, I don't have that at the moment. How do I... Did I have the option to ever do something like that? I don't think I did. Uh... I can access the map at any time. But it's not like I can go anywhere. I'm in the middle of a conversation. I mean, when am I not technically in the middle of a conversation? I don't know. It's not like I can do anything with this. Why do we have an inventory? This has never come up. Um. Oh! I see! I was supposed to click on the gold coins if I wanted to work. Oh my god, I'm lo- Oh. But I love that- I love that music or something. That was hilarious. So if I- Should I- Can I go to work and then just return here? Because that, that's kind of what I just did. I didn't roll back, I like let- I right-clicked? To get out of it? Um... I don't know, let me roll back a little bit maybe before it checked like how much money I had? And we'll click on this now. Oh my god, this music. Unfortunately, for some reason, I can't hide the dialogue box here. But it prepares for work. He has three clients interested in. Oh. Okay, so this is Patreon only, I see. Only entering the minigames code in the main menu will enable him. Okay. So we either have... Um, well, this guy's name is Sh Shaky? <laughs> Shaky? Okay. Is Shaky the name of a pizza place? That's what I feel like it's the name of. Okay, I'm sorry, I had to re remove my camera for a second so you could see this guy. Um, this guy is, um, Loring, a wealthy young man, the son of an Emirion bourgeois... Um, spends all the day in the brothel. I mean, this movie's just kind of funky. I don't hate it. I don't hate it. Or Muka, or Maka, leader of a distant tribe. He comes to the brothel for pleasures he cannot find in his lands. And apparently he doesn't have a backstory. He just... He's just a Patreon man. Um, I kind of hate this guy's facial features. But, you know, when I look at him, like, do you see those, like, scars? Or actually, let me remove my camera again. Um, but do you see those scars, um, what's his name? Do you see those scars Loring has under his chest? They look kind of like, um, I don't, I don't remember the term for when you have excess breast, breast tissue removed from your chest, but, um... When a trans um, person, specifically an 
F to M trans person has top surgery. That's what it kind of looks like. It looks like those kinds of scars. Like, am I crazy? I don't know. Maybe I am crazy. I bet he, I, I bet he has a D, though. A PP. -P. Um, Alright, just wanted to throw that out there. Just in case. Like, maybe he does have a... Maybe he doesn't have a D. That could be interesting. But I feel like if I pick that and then he does have a D, I'm going to be disappointed. Um, Alright, let's go with him. He gives us the most money anyway. Oh my god, where's my gold? <gasps> no! Where's my gold? No! Give me the gold! My gold! Bruh! My gold! My gold! Where's my gold? Oh god, I don't know. I don't know where my gold is. Anyway. Uh, where was I in this conversation? Oh god, I thought I'd just get the gold instantly. But where is it then? Sorry, Acteon. I can't help you with that. I don't have that much at the moment. Don't mention it, Bennett. You already have helped me too much. I hope not, but you know that if the apothecary delays again, you can stay at my house. Okay, thank you, Bennett. Truth is that I don't know how to thank you, but I really hope you can finish the medicine soon. I feel I'm abusing your generosity. Don't be silly, Acteon. Don't say those things. Sorry, that's how I feel. Maybe we do actually have the gold, but Ben is just pretending not to have the gold so we can have Acteon stay at the house again so we can fantasize about it more. You relax. Let's hope not. But if the medicine is not ready for today, I wait for you at home tonight. Okay, Bennett. I hope you finish before the day ends. But if not, I'll be there. And relax. Don't do anything crazy. You just make things worse. I know it's unfair. Yes, I know. Don't worry. I'm not going to do anything crazy. But I realized that it was getting late, and he still had to go to the port to meet the person who had sent him the note. Wait, someone sent... Wait, what was the note that we got? Was that a different note? Oh, that's right! We had a totally different note. Someone slipped us a note when we went to the docks. But then we also had that other note that was nailed... Not nailed. Knifed. It was knifed to our house. I guess we have a lot of notes, mysterious notes. I don't know when that note, when the note with a knife is ever going to be discussed again. Well, Acteon, I leave you. I still have some errands to do. Okay, take care and thank you again. See you. But I quickly went straight to the port. All right, guys, I'm going to end this episode of Medieval Times right here. So I thank you all for watching, and I shall see you in the next video. Bye, guys.